Ah, Skyrim mods. What better way to spend your entire day than watching an Ariva video and make Skyrim crash by installing more mods? If that sounds like something you do, then watch this video until the end. So why don't we dive into our first mod today? Let's start with some amazing location mods, the latest additions to the Rin's overhaul series. We got Rin's Lost Valley Redoubt. A pretty interesting location in vanilla with multiple elevations, but with Rin's mod, you can turn this area into a massive Nordic ruin, making it seem like there used to be a sprawling city in the ancient times. And it makes the area feel grand. Exploring this area now will feel less like you're playing a 2011 game like Skyrim and more like a modern day like Elden Ring. If you want to get the full experience, wait until it rains for that extra eerie ambience. Not to mention that you've never felt cooler jumping off the big platform at the top. That is obviously if you can actually stick the landing, which I wasn't able to. Then we have Rin's Broken Tower Redoubt. More than doubling the size of the stronghold by adding a second section on the hill right in front of the original location, along with a bridge connecting the two. This makes the currently Forsworn inhabited area feel twice as intimidating and as epic to explore. It really feels like Rin's mods keep getting better and better and one can only hope that this trend never dies. I would like to use these mods eventually in a bigger video that will overhaul most locations in the game, but we'll talk more about this later in this video. While we're still on the topic of locations, let's head to the capital city, Solitude. We got the brand new installment in the JK series, JK Solitude Outskirts. This mod adds a bigger entrance if you're coming from the main path into the city. A bigger farm with extra buildings and actual crops. I mean, what an oversight not having crops on the farm that feeds the biggest city in Skyrim. And it also makes the docks feel bigger and adds more buildings on the north side, including a whole tower that you can use to go up to the city. My previous setup with this location was Enhanced Solitude Docks, which is the bigger mod out of the two. But I'll be completely honest, frame rate becomes your worst nightmare with that mod. Also, have I mentioned that this comes with a built-in outhouse? You know how much I love toilets and mods, so this mod has the Nariva seal of approval. While we're still in Solitude, why not take a look at Solitude Watchtower? This mod makes the watchtower more unique by giving it a taller stature and a pointy top, which looks pretty cool and fitting with Solitude's aesthetic. There is also a very nicely decorated interior featuring storage and weapons and shields for the guards to use. This mod is really cool, but unfortunately it's not compatible with JK Solitude. At least not until someone makes a patch for them, which I don't think has happened yet. If anyone finds or makes one, please let me know. Now let's take a look at a very simple, convenient and immersive mod. Simple Portable Cooking adds two new simple mechanics to the game. You can now go to a forge and craft a cooking pot that you can activate whenever you're near a heat source to make a delicious meal. Or in my case, applesauce since I don't have any other ingredients on me. You can go to campfires, giant fires, brazers, and even blacksmith forges if you're feeling creative. And yeah, we don't really talk about the brazier animations, we'll keep that low key. With this mod, you can also craft a makeshift mortal and pestle, which weirdly enough, you only need a bowl for. I mean, where's the pestle? Or is it a mortar that is missing? I don't really care enough to look up which is which. And with this item, your character will start pounding. This will open the alchemy menu so you can create potions on the go. This is probably the most unique and interesting armor sets ever. Introducing Wayrest Cellsword Armor, a mod that adds a new unisex set to Skyrim. This mod would fit a bread and character, mostly since that's where most of the inspiration comes from. It is very detailed having a few cloth pieces acting like capes and quilts, each having a unique design and color scheme, making this a very colorful armor. You can see there is a lot of astronomy related symbols here, so it would fit a nerd. Just kidding, it would fit an arcane researcher who also goes on their own adventures in order to gather knowledge. The helmet also has really cool elven ears that showcases the elf heritage of Reddens. And you can also choose to have the closed version or the open version. Now depending on how ugly your character is, the closed version is probably your best choice. This set also comes with a custom shield and also a sword that for some reason does not have a pointy end. But if anything, that makes it more unique. Now I can totally understand if someone says that this mod is not for them. In fact, this mod is not for me. I probably wouldn't wear this, but I think it's an amazing design. And believe it or not, that is not the only quality armor that I will show off today. Introducing Armor of Blades. 
An amazing assassin looking armor that also comes in a unisex variety. I actually have to specify that because a lot of mods that I use in my game are gender specific. Specifically female, for some reason. But the blades armor has this really cool little red riding hood feel while not looking cute or girly which is actually kind of impressive. The set features not one, not two, but three masks that you're wearing at the same time. Granted, two of them you're wearing wrong, but it still looks pretty cool. The set also comes with its own custom sword, and this one makes up for the lack of pointy ends in the previous one, as it features two pointy blades. Now everything cancels out, you see? Everything's planned here on Nariva TV. And while we're talking about armors, I want to try a new armor set that will maybe be reoccurring in my videos, and that is Sangria. It's a pretty customizable set, and I like it quite a bit. I know most of you guys don't really care about pretty slash hot armors like this, but I wanted to mention it in case I get the usual comment asking for the name of the mod that I'm wearing, so here it is. It's been a few months that we haven't taken a look at a cool magic mod, so I think it is time. Obscure Magic is a mod that adds 12 new cool spells across multiple schools of magic. So let's look at a few. Starting with Celestial Vortex, creating a gravitational beacon that pulls nearby targets and staggers them. It creates this really cool implosion effect, and not only does it look cool, but also makes Nazim suffer, which is a positive in my book, so this spell gets a pass. Then we got Nature's Fury that staggers and disarms a target, basically a stupefy and Expelliarmus combined. You Harry Potter nerds will understand what I'm talking about. Water Globe is one of my favorites that creates a sphere of water that slows targets and damages their stamina and magicka over time. Sadly, it doesn't drown them, which would have made it my favorite, actually. A very funny one is Hollowjack Lantern that creates a magical lantern that will instill fear into targets up to level 14, and since Nazim is a little bitch boy, he will constantly panic when you're close to him, which is so fun. I just love bullying this guy. Now this is the level of fear that Nazim lovers like Papa Quill should feel when I run at them with murderous intent. And speaking of Nazim lovers, the spell Blazing Frost is perfect to use on them, creating a blast of cold fire. F*** off, loser. Infernal Mist is also a great option for you, creating a massive fiery explosion that also leaves a mist of gas residue. Then we can use the Adric Scepter to maul the sh** out of them. This death is so quick that even Nazim is smiling for not having to suffer too much. And finally, Radiant Oppression that creates a beam of magic that deals 30 points of damage per second. Now this is amazing for a quick death, just look at this thing go. Now there are a few more spells that come with this mod, but these are the coolest in my opinion, so check out the mod page if you want to know more. Now that we killed Nazim a few times, let's move on to the next mod. We will probably kill him a few more times for the duration of this video, but we're, we're good for now. Let's take a break. Now, I don't usually review player home mods on this channel, but when I do, you know their quality. This is Magpie Manor, a massive manor that is perfect for a scholar, a mage, or even a family man. O or woman, or woman. It's situated somewhere in the reach, and in order to purchase it, you need to save up a little bit. But once you get it, everything is yours. It comes with a garden, a chicken coop, a forge, and not to mention that everything's extremely decorated and looks amazing. Now, yes, this mod does take a toll on your performance, but if your PC can handle it, I think it's worth it. If we go inside, you'll see that all the rooms are furnished and everything looks super sophisticated. There are a few interesting paintings all around the house and even the family tree of whoever lived here before you, it's probably not yours, let's be real, uh, but you can just pretend that it's your own family. The house features a dining room, a living room with a quaint office corner. If you go upstairs, you'll see the children's room, which is my favorite room in the house. It's very colorful and cozy and filled with toys and all kinds of items that kids would love. In the cellar, you have your kitchen area with storage including a fridge and a smoker, the master bedroom with a very high class wallpaper decorating it, a walk-in closet, a bookshelf, and a fireplace to keep you warm. There's also an astronomy corner that leads you to the top of the tower with a greenhouse. Closer to the attic, you have your work area where you would do your research with all kinds of ingredients and artifacts. Are you studying astronomy, botany, the arcane 
arts, why not all of them? Another favorite room of mine would have to be the bathroom. I mean, it's gotta be. Who else would have a massive painting hanging on the walls of the bathroom? And a really cool detail is that if you sit on the throne, your character will start watching medieval TikToks. This house mod is absolutely amazing in my opinion. All the detail and the love put into it is what makes it one of the coziest house mods lately on the Nexus. And hopefully, YouTube doesn't demonetize this peepee -pee shot. Now, have you heard of Lost Ark? This sounds like a sponsor, but uh, it's not. Although, Lost Ark? I'd be down. But the mod Witchy Lost Ark Horns adds a few horns from the Lost Ark MMO to Skyrim. I've never been super big into horns, no offense Umbriel, but these ones are actually really cool, even for a vanilla bitch boy like me. I mean, this one in particular is just insane! It also has physics for ribbons which look really cool when you move around. If you want to make your character a little more devilish, here's a great mod to do so. Now, I might be killing Nazim, but I'm actually doing him a big favor right now, engaging in horn mommy domination. I know you would want the same treatment as well. We all know about the embalming tools in Skyrim. We know that they exist, no one knows what they're for, but they exist. And since we can end up seeing a bunch of them as we're exploring dungeons, why not make them look great with JS embalming tools? This mod enhances the textures and the models, adding more detail in the form of these patterns. At this point, there are so many mods making useless items like this look HD that we can have a whole series of videos showcasing them. Um, excuse me sir, what the f***? You can get the textures up to 4K, but I got the 2K version cause I actually want my boomer of a PC to survive for another year or so, but I do recommend you check out the other mods in the JS series since I think they're all quality. Now let's take a look at two mods at the same time. Haven't you ever wondered where tomatoes and apples and carrots come from? Cause whenever you visit an actual farm in Skyrim, you don't actually see these crops. But Lively Farms answers this question, adding these crops along with pears to the farms of Skyrim. It's a pretty small mod simply to increase your immersion and it also adds scarecrows throughout the farms which is a very nice touch. Now transparently, I don't know if this is my fault or if it's the mod, but the apples look a little goofy on the trees. Oops, I guess, but what the mod aims to do is actually very cool. Now I haven't heard anyone else talking about this issue so it could very well just be me. If you combine this with producers of Skyrim and the patch that makes them both work at the same time, these farmers will sell you what they grow on the farms which is just another level of immersion that is very well accepted, very well uh, welcome, very welcome. That's the word. <laughs> PS Boss is back and here we have the latest addition in the sexification of Skyrim. New Grey Fox Bust will literally make you bust. There's nothing wrong with a vanilla bust, it's probably one of the coolest items in the game, but with this simple mod you can turn this absolute chad into a chat debt. If I had this bust on my desk, I know I would make these videos twice as fast as I would not ever want to leave my desk. Now I totally understand why Mercer is hiding this beautiful item in his basement. I would too. Instead I have a purple turnip. A beat, I don't even know what this thing is. And these would be the mods for today. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're not already. Before you leave, I want to share a little bit of what I'm working on, so... For the next few videos, the plan is as follows. A new graphics overhaul, since I've changed my mods a lot since last year. Then, a part 2 in a sense of my graphics video, with locations and an all-in-one city overhaul. The goals of these videos is to make Skyrim look amazing, while also caring a little bit about performance, especially when it comes to cities, since my FPS used to drop below 20 quite often. So my goal for 2024 is to have a sustainable setup. And once these two videos are done, I will look to make a camping related video. Now I can't promise that video yet because I'm not very familiar with camping mods, but a bunch of you suggested that I make a video on that so I will give it my best shot. If you think that's interesting for you, now is the perfect time to subscribe and keep up with the channel. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who continue to support more and more content here. Your name can also appear at the end of my videos or you can be roasted to bits if you choose the Nazim Lover tier. You also unlock longer versions of my videos with deleted scenes and such and you can get a 7 day trial trial for free. You can then cancel whenever, no hard feelings. Link is in the description. Now, click on this video if you like Skyrim mods, or if you're more of a Skyrim mods kind of guy, click on this video. Thank you for watching this Skyrim mods video. Now, leave me alone.